Uh, now, we mentioned earlier that this, of course, is the Labour Party's virtual conference weekend. We spoke to Sir Keir Starmer. At last year's event, things were quite different. Not only could people gather in person in Brighton, but Jeremy Corbyn was still the party's leader. One thing that is the same as last year, though, is that we're joined by Len McCluskey, the General Secretary of Unite, one of the most powerful figures uh, in the Labour movement. Thank you very much for being on Morning, the programme. Um, I just want to start off with coronavirus. You know, quite an alarming you know, warning from the House Secretary there about the second wave. And jobs in particular, because, of course, the job retention scheme, which protected so many jobs throughout coronavirus, is in the process of ending, being wound down. How worried are you about what that's going to mean for unemployment? We're deeply worried. I mean, the clock is ticking. And the fact of the matter is that there are millions and millions of workers currently on the job protection scheme who uh, will be worried, them and their families, deeply worried about uh, the future. What angers me, uh, our members, our workers in the UK will be having sleepless nights, but they won't be having sleepless nights in Germany and France and Spain and Belgium and Holland and Scandinavia because their governments have stepped up to the plate to protect their workforce. And my simple question to the Prime Minister and to the Chancellor is, why should British workers be treated as second-class citizens in Europe? We must protect jobs in order to make certain that when we come out of this virus, which we, which we will, we will have a robust economy with skills still preserved, with experienced workers able to compete. Otherwise, this Prime Minister will preside over the highest record um, unemployment figures and uh, record poverty levels in the UK that we've never seen since well, the what, how, what jobs are you What job losses are you predicting then? Well, literally, if the floor is pulled from beneath the job retention scheme, we're looking at millions. Uh, and what we have to say and what we have been saying to the Chancellor back when he introduced the scheme, I think I was the first to say it was bold and courageous. And he's going to lose all of that advantage if we don't do something now extending the scheme like well, Germany have extended it for two years. At the same time, though, you know, you're talking there about the government needs to step up to the plate, otherwise, um, you know, it will be judged. But at the same time, the scheme has cost 35 billion billion pounds. This is a lot of money. Obviously, jobs are so important. Nobody wants to see job losses. But, but how would... much longer can it continue for? <laughs> as long as it takes. Would we sooner those workers costing the taxpayer 35 million, billion pound by drawing uh, benefits on the dole? If Germany and the rest of Europe can do it, why can't our governments? The truth of the matter is that our economy, it's essential that we are robust enough when we come out of this virus. Germany, uh, uh, France, they won't be looking at wastelands in their economy, but we're in danger of becoming Wasteland UK. We have to protect jobs because without it, then the devastation that we've seen so far will, be, uh, uh, will increase uh, incredibly. Uh, my colleague John Craig said that you've asked the Prime Minister for a meeting. You've written a letter. Has he replied? Not yet, but I, I only wrote uh, earlier in the week, and so... He's been quite busy. Possibly. He's been busy, yes. OK. Um, now, Matt Hancock was also outlining um, some new uh, plans on people who need to self-isolate. Part of that, of course, is the stick, the fines, but some of it is a carrot as well, this idea uh, that people will receive a £500 payment if they're on low incomes, if they, have to, if they can't work from home. Is that something you welcome? Of course. Uh, anything is welcome to protect workers. But, of course, what the Chancellor needs to do is be much more focused. We need sectoral financial packages for aviation, automotive, aerospace, hospitality, all of whom are in really, really trouble. The government introduced schemes to lend uh, money to companies through the Bank of England. It failed miserably because of the criteria. Project Birch was another approach that they took. To my knowledge, there's only one company that uh, passed the criteria. The government needs to be far more proactive and far more imaginative than they currently are. Um, now, we spoke to Sir Keir Starmer earlier in the programme. You, of course, didn't back him for the leadership race, but what do you make of how he's done so far? I do back Keir now. He's our leader. Uh, he's been competent. I mean, I think everybody uh, putting politics to one side when they see him um, 
in question time with the Prime Minister, the competence of uh, Keir Starmer really exposes uh, the Prime Minister. So I think he's, uh, he, he's doing OK. Obviously, he needs to move on in terms of the um, policies and the vision. I you mean, say move on. That's quite interesting, isn't it? Because, you know, he's unveiled his new slogan, new leadership. I mean, it's not very subtle, is it? It's a bit of a dig at Jeremy Corbyn. Well, it's certainly got, not got my pulses running. New leadership, I, actually, it's a bit meaningless, although uh, it's a statement of fact. There is a new leader, and that new leader was elected, by the way, by uh, quite overwhelmingly, by our membership, including my members, on a 10-point um, platform, which was a radical, progressive uh, platform. And I think I spoke to Keir very recently and he was making the point that he doesn't want to lay out all the details of what he or Labour stands for four years away from a general election. I can understand that, but I think he knows that fairly soon he will have to emerge to the public with what his vision is. And I'm confident if he sticks to that radical alternative that he ran on, I'm confident that that will uh, serve him well, certainly in our red wall seats. It's interesting, isn't it? Uh, you know, you're, you're reminding us of the radical platform that he ran on. Um, you know, you said your last month uh, that, you know, he ran on a radical programme, some might say a Corbyn programme. He has to recognise that if the ship is he's sailing, if it lists too much to the right, it will go under. Are you worried that he is moving too far away from what you would describe as the radical Corbyn agenda? No, I'm not worried at the moment. Are you sure? I'm not worried at the moment, but of course we will uh, review the situation. Keir is in a great, great position. There is real, a real wish to support him from all wings of the Labour Party. I mean, if you, if you look at the left of the party and how they have behaved to Keir, uh, it's in stark contrast to the way the right wing of the party behaved towards Corbyn. So I want him to be the Prime Minister next time there's a general election. And my belief is that if he sticks to the kind of progressive, ambitious um, alternatives that have been developed under Labour over the last uh, five years, then I think he will be our Prime Minister. And if he doesn't? I think he'll be in Trump. OK. Uh, the polling may not necessarily uh, agree with you um, because it does feel as if Labour is doing pretty well under uh, Keir Starmer, much better than uh, the state of the party uh, that he uh, was inherited from Jeremy Corbyn. So here is the latest Yuga poll, September 16th to the 17th. Labour and the Conservatives both on 40%. Now, two days before Jeremy Corbyn stepped down as Labour, as leader, sorry, Labour was on 28%. That's 24 points behind. Some people would say, looking at the polls, he's doing all the right things to distance himself yeah, from Jeremy I think, Corbyn. I think that's a fair... Well, I don't know about distancing himself from Corbyn. Uh, I thought you asked him an interesting question about Brexit. The reality, of course, is Labour lost the last election on one issue only, and that was Brexit. The Conservatives formed a government with 44% extraordinary on one slogan, get Brexit done. Now, that's why Keir very cleverly is sidestepping the Prime Minister's trap to pull him back into Brexit, because Brexit would be divisive in the Labour Party. Brexit needs to be out of the way. And I think then what you'll see, if you check back with your researchers on some of the previous polls, what policies Corbyn put forward on a whole range of issues were very popular with, uh, with the public, in particular in our red wall seats. So that's what Keir has to do. He's trying to navigate his way through a difficult situation and I want to help him. Those on the left want to help him. Uh, but he said he's listening to people around the country, which he is, and he needs to listen to the left because without the left uh, within our movement, then Keir will... I'm afraid, sail the ship onto the rocks. And I don't think he'll do that. I think he's up for listening and the unity that he looks for is important. In his pledge, when he ran for leader, he said he intended to make the moral case for socialism. That will do me if he continues that line. OK. Uh, Len McCluskey, thank you very much. Always interesting to talk. Thank you.